Today's topic is citric acid cycle. It is also called as TCA cycle or Krebs cycle. Why it is called as TCA cycle? Because in the first two intermediary products, it contains three carboxylic groups. Why it is called as Krebs cycle? Because it, it is proposed by the German-born British scientist Sir Adolf Krebs in the year 1937. For his contribution, he got Nobel Prize in the year 1953. It is also called as citric acid cycle. Why it is called as citric acid cycle? Because in this cycle, the first product is citrate or citric acid. Based on the product name also, it is called as citric acid cycle. Citric acid cycle is the process of oxidation of acetyl choline JBA to carbon dioxide and water molecule through a cyclic sequence of compounds interrelated by oxidation, reduction and other reactions. It is the final common pathway of catabolism of carbohydrates, fats and proteins. Glucose is oxidized to pyruvate and pyruvate is oxidized to acetyl coenzyme A. Acetyl coenzyme A is the link between two pathways. Those two pathways are glycolysis pathway and TCA cycle pathway. Glycolysis pathway is an anaerobic pathway as well as aerobic pathway. Whereas Krebs cycle is an aerobic pathway. Anaerobic pathway means in the absence of oxygen, the reaction takes place. Aerobic pathway means in the presence of oxygen, the reaction takes place. In case of TCA cycle, the whole process is an aerobic pathway. If there is an absence of oxygen takes place, there is a total or partial inhibition of the cycle. Estine coenzyme A is mainly used for the synthesis of cholesterol. It is also used in the synthesis of fatty acids. Estine coenzyme A, when combines with oxaloacetate, in the presence of citrate synthetase, it produces citrate or citric acid. During this reaction, it liberates coenzyme A and by the addition of water takes place. From the citrate, it forms isocitrate. This reaction involves two steps. In the first step, citrate is converted to a conitrate. In this step, there is a removal of water takes place. That means dehydration reaction takes place. From the econitate, it forms isocitrate. In this step, there is an addition of water takes place. That reaction is called as rehydration. So in the second step, from the citrate to isocitrate, there is a dehydration and rehydration. It also requires ferrous ions. The whole reaction takes place in the presence of catalyzed enzyme that is econitase. Isocitrate forms oxalosuccinate in presence of isocitrate dehydrogenase. It requires manganese ions or magnesium ions. There is a reduction of NAD plus 2, NADH. Oxalosuccinate produces alpha ketoglutarate in presence of isocitrate dehydrogenase. Here there is a removal of carbon dioxide takes place. 
Removal of carbon dioxide is known as decarboxylation. And further, accumulation of alpha keto butyrate, arsenite takes role. Arsenite is the inhibitor of the isocitrate dehydrogenase enzyme. So that there is a accumulation of alpha ketoglutarate. Alpha ketoglutarate forms saxenyl coenzyme A in presence of alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. There is a requirement of magnesium ions, TPP, lipoic acid. All these are comes under coenzymes. And there is a reduction of NAD to NAD+. Here also there is a liberation of coenzyme A. From succinyl coenzyme A, it forms succinate. Here there is a formation of GTP. GTP is nothing but guanine triphosphate. From guanine diphosphate in the presence of Succinyl coenzyme A synthetase. The succinyl coenzyme A synthetase is also known as succinate thiokinase. Here, the succinyl coenzyme A mainly used for the synthesis of heme. That means it is used for the synthesis of heme. And from the succinate, it forms fumarate in presence of succinate dehydrogenase. Here, FAD is reduced to FADH2 and from the fumarate it produces fumarate it produces malate in presence of fumarate hydratase. That means there is a addition of water molecule. From malate it forms oxaloacetate in presence of malate dehydrogenase. There is a reduction of NAD plus to NADH. Again, the cycle will be repeated because one pyruvic acid liberates two acetyl coenzyme A molecules. So, the net gain of the citric acid cycle is 24 ATPs. Here, 3 NADH, second one, third one, 3 NADH are liberated. 1 NADH is equals to 3 ATPs. So, totally, the cycle will be repeated twice. So, totally, 6 NADH is equals to 18 ATP and uh, 1 FAD is converted to FADH2. So it requires 2 ATPs. So again the cycle will be repeated second time. It requires 4 ATPs and formation of 1 GTP. The cycle will be repeated second time means here also it requires 2 ATPs. So the net Gain of TCA is 24 ATPs.